Hello bookish people, it is Jay here. Uh, I'm here to do uh, the alphabet soup tag. A is for author, uh, original tag uh, created by Sean the Book Maniac. Uh, apparently is going to be a series of tags, uh, A to Z, but perhaps in a jumbled up order, but we're gonna start with A to start off with. So I'm looking forward to all the other, all the other tags, Sean, and we'll, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how I do on this one and whether you wanna tag me again. Though he says anyone can do it, so. The floodgates are open. All right, so the prompts. Uh, a is for author, a good book by an author whose first name or last name starts with the letter A. First names are too easy, so bonus points for a surname, double points for a first and last name. And I'm just gonna go for just easy, easy points. I'm gonna go with Chris Adrian, uh, The Children's Hospital, uh, which is a weird, weird book. It's about a children's hospital that there is a, Flood of biblical proportions, uh, which the rest of the world is flooded under like seven, seven miles deep of water. And this children's hospital is floating around. Now, Chris Adrian wa was, is, uh, a medical doctor, uh, I believe of children. And this book pulls no punches, punches with, uh, the illnesses, uh, that the uh, children in this book, um, are are experiencing uh so this very kind of this very kind of grounded kind of medical stuff of chil sick children is mixed into this kind of very odd it's a like it's a it's an arc of, of sick children and the doctors and the nurses and some of the family floating around in this in this post i guess true apocalypse uh world and there are angels there are terrible terrible angels uh angels in that terrible awe sense of the word of angels and um he's one of these guys who i've read his i've read this and i picked up uh, one of his old the book before this i have never read it uh, and he's written other books after this and I, ha I haven't read them either um it's one of these things i think i want to go back and read this again it really had an impact on me at the time um i really remember it i i Held on to the book and a lot of books I did not hold on to though that to me that's a perfect uh, J cover that's just that nice simple simple covers um, you know yeah so that's that's the children's hospital by Chris Adrian that's for my my first thing um, A is for well A uh, or ah we'll, we'll keep this non-Canadian at the moment ah the last book you read with the articles with the article one letter word ah uh, in the title. Now, um, that the last book was actually probably read to me, read to me by Jason over at Old Blue's uh, Chapter and Verse. No, he didn't come over to my house on Christmas and read the book to me. He read it on his channel. And I totally would encourage you, uh, if you're, if you're feeling in the Christmas spirit, if you want to feel nice and chilly as you're slowly melting in Chicago, say, um, this would be a wonderful thing to listen to is, is Jason reading A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Definitely gets you, uh, you can all snuggled up and, 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 and listen to him do a wonderful reading of the book. Now, the, the book that I probably, um, last read with a, read, read with the title would be, uh, A Gentleman from Bear Creek by, uh, Robert E. Howard, which is all about, it's kind of, it's Conan, but as a cowboy, uh, super powered cowboy who can, you know, basically, you know, take all sorts of damage. It shows Robert E. Howard in his humorous, very slapstick, very kind of, um, that kind of vein. If you think of grim, grim Conan, this is, this is wacky, wacky, super mus muscled, but, um, co comedic cowboy stories. Uh, there's a whole collection of them. And this is the, the first one is a gentleman from Bear Creek. Um, A is number three. A is for angry, a book that pissed you off. Uh, and for me, that is going to have to be extremely loud and incredibly close by uh, Jonathan Safran Foer. Uh, it's a book that centers around the events of 9-11. And, um, you know, I'm not someone who was a, a, a resident of, of New York. I was just simply a part of the world at that time and sat in shock uh, and got to the TV as the second tower went down. And this book really pissed me off in the way that it addressed um, this complex issue and i feel like it's it's one of these books that um i feel like the politicians at the time infantilized uh people and and used their fear to push their own agendas and this book 
by using this um, precocious kind of movie cliche kind of character of this little child who is like, why? Why did this happen? It's like, what a horribly naive and irresponsible way to address uh, something as as complex as uh, 9-11. And it was a book that really, really in, enraged me uh, by, <laughs> by how, how it treated uh, 9-11. It, it's just like, it's one of these give me a freaking break kind of books. That said, I've read uh, I read another book by Jonathan Jonathan Safran Fowler uh, on eating animals, and actually that was a good book. So that's not to I hate this book by him. I like this book by him. I you know this isn't about the author, but I really hated his approach in extremely loud and incredibly close, and the movie sucked as well. By the way, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, A is for awesome. Let's do some positivity here. Sean's all about the positivity. Um, a top read of recent years. And he says, like, you know, don't, don't bring up Kristen Lavin's daughter. Bring up, uh, a Scott's queer. Come, come, give me something new. Um, and so, uh, I'm going to go with the, the Golden Notebook by Doris Lessing, which is odd because at the moment I am reading, um, The Sweetest Dream by Gor Doris Lessing. Uh, this book was published in 1962, A Sweetest Dream, which was, Sweetest Dream, which was written, I believe, in 2002. Uh, actually is set in 1962. This one is set more in the kind of the uh, late 50s, I would say. Uh, and is it's the gold notebook. Uh, the, this book is comprised of uh, four notebooks. Uh, the um, black for the main character's experience, Anna's experiences in southern Rhodesia. Um, uh, red, uh, her kind of experience in the Communist Party and, you know, exactly how, 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 blinkered and ideolo ideological that was uh yellow for kind of a love affair and blue for her memories dreams and um dreams and just you know her emotional life uh and all this these are all interspersed within this thing called free women which is more of a kind of a traditional narrative about uh anna her friend molly uh her um her the men in her life uh, and the kind of the, ch the children and lovers. Um, and it's, this was extremely, it's, uh, so I think there's someone talked about being kind of like an inner space book, but it's an inner space book that actually also has the politics in it. It's like, you can be so soft, 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 soft. you can be so inward looking. I'll, I'll go with inner look looking. We don't have to try and watch me try and say a word. Um, it can be so inward looking, but this is a book that actually combines the personal and the political in, um, you know, in a book that really, really got under my skin, really touched me. And I'm really enjoying Sweetest Dream right, Sweetest Dream right now. So thank you, uh, Britta Bowler, uh, for, uh, talking about that. And I'll, I'll have to read you, listen to your review, uh, once I've actually finished the book myself. So yeah, The Golden Notebook, The Golden Notebook is definitely a, is, is awesome book. Uh, no, a, uh, a is for Ah, a book which whose title includes at least three A's, a uh, bonus for more than three. And I've got one that goes for six because it's got a nice long title, which is The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael uh, Chabon, uh, which is a book that's set in um, sort of kind of spans the golden age of comics from so like 1939 to sort of 1954 from like people coming home from the war to uh, the... Uh, the corruption of the innocent and, and Senate trials where they basically said like this comics, dangerous comics are corrupting our children. And what's this odd relationship that Batman has with Robin? It must be, it must be a gay relationship. And indeed, uh, with Cavalier and Clay, the uh, two comic artists, uh, one of the artists is indeed gay and, um, suffers, suffers due to society's, um, attitudes towards this and this is michael shaban i don't think has written i i haven't i i've actually not read i've read uh, a couple of more of his like i read wonder boys i've read um uh, the one set up in alaska which i just named i can't the alternate universe one and gentlemen of the road but none of those have touched cavalier and clay it was this big chunky uh kind of uh kind of you know kind of a saga book uh, kind of really spread out through this community and it it combined uh kind of love of kind of of my love of comics with kind of love of literature together um Chaban, i think is one of these kind of first guys who is doing that kind of intersectional thing where he's 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 
he's uh, combining kind of um, low culture comics with the literary, the genre with the, with uh, literary, uh, and doing it in uh, such an amazing, amazing fashion, which I think is yet to be topped a lot of ways. Um, yes, so definitely, definitely. Uh, ah, A is for annoying. Let's go back to negativity because Sean's all about annoying stuff as well. Um, what's a character that drove you up the wall? And um, that would be in a series that has driven me up by the wall, up the wall by an, an author who's had his ups and downs, uh, Christopher Moore. He writes very kind of light body, uh, comedic novels, um, sometimes, oftentimes with, uh, either kind of like, kind of more supernatural elements in it, or, uh, sometimes some science fiction things suddenly twisting up in the middle of a novel. Uh, and I've, I've really, in, really enjoyed that. Um, I, 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 you know, but this series, it's a love story series, which, Oh, I hate this series. I, this is the second book and I've ne I never gone, I've never gone further. And oh my God, the, 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 the dedication at the front of this, I think says it all. It's, it's the dedication at the front of this is for my readers by request, because this is the most awful, awful kind of lazy fan service. I don't hate Christopher Moore. He's written other, other you know, Serpent of Venice, other books, you know, that have been like, you know, oh, okay, this is he, him back again, him, him trying, but, uh, the, the love story books were not, but I haven't gotten to the character yet. Abby Normal. There is a character in this book called Abby Normal, who is a 16-year-old goth girl. And she is your cliched 16-year-old goth girl. And I think Moore said, oh, he went into chat rooms and he studied kind of the speech patterns of 16-year-old girls. And this sounds so much like a middle-aged guy with a sock puppet teenage girl. It's, it's cringy. Drove me up the wall. I did not go past this book. I did not go past this book. And I do not talk about it anymore. We are done here. All right. Uh, a is for ambivalent, a book that you're sure you're still not sure about how you how you feel about, which is an interesting question, because then you start thinking about the novels that you're not sure about. And then you start thinking about them. And you go, oh, wait a minute. Maybe I am sure about that. Maybe I'm ambivalent because it sucked. Uh, or maybe I'm. But. The one that I came up with is All the Birds in the Sky uh, by Charlie Jane Anders, which um, had, it was a book, it was a first first novel by Charlie Jane Anders. Uh, it was definitely ambitious. Um, she, she has the characters kind of grow up throughout the space of the novel. So it starts out very kind of simple language, uh, very kind of clunky, why, to my opinion, very clunky YA language. And then slowly throughout the book kind of picks up speed until you get kind of, oh, here's, here's adults who are smart because children are idiots and can't, 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 uh, can't, their language wouldn't be that good, which is maybe shows the limitation of the author. So there's that, there's that point of it. I found the, the first big, big, you know, it's like, oh, people are criticizing for having simple language. No, I'm, I'm, I'm criticizing it for having clunky, uh, simple language. Uh, you can write, the mo I've, I, some of the best writing I've written has been written for children and is eloquent, eloquent and beautiful. Uh, Charlotte's Web, take what, for example, uh, E.B. White, who's probably like one of those kind of great, uh, held up as somebody who's, whose language is, is particularly an, um, light and crisp. Um, it's like, yeah, there's people who can write, um, who can write clunky, um, t that basic language. And then there's people who can do simplicity in a way that is, is beautiful and flows. And, uh, Charlie Jane Anders can't do that. Um, so there was that issue of it. I, though, you see, now this is the thing is I really love characters and the, the love story in the, in that book. I, I actually, I, I believe the love story while I didn't believe a lot of the other elements around it. Uh, and so that, I think that maybe that's why I'm ambivalent because having characters that I, that I can root for, that I can believe in, can take stuff like, you know, clunky language at the beginning, uh, a mixture of magic and science fiction, where the science fiction is basically so soft science fiction, it's also just fantasy. Uh, so there's not much of a kind of an, of a thing there. There's a battle between the magic people and the sci, the sci-fi people in this book that I also don't really care about. Um, I only care about these core characters in there. So, I'm ambivalent. I get, uh, I sound more negative than I sound ambivalent, don't I? So I'm just going to pass on and just say, uh, I always leave this thing plugged in. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
is her anticipation uh, a new a book new new release or not that you're very much looking forward to reading um and I'm going to go with um, No Walls and the Reoccurring Dream, a memoir by Annie DeFranco, which I mentioned, I think, in the last video of kind of, you know, upcoming reads. Uh, and yeah, Annie, A, A is for Annie, uh, in case you didn't notice, um, which I'm, I'm, I'm also, I'm looking forward to, but I'm also kind of, oh God, how is it going to be? I, I have to admit there's anticipation there. Oh, it's like Andy DeFranco is going to kind of write about her life and that might, won't that be, we'll see, interesting. She's not a, she's a songwriter, not a, has she written, you know, how, how will she be as, as a uh, writer of a memoir? Um, will she have, you would think at this point she, in her career, she would have kind of a lot of space and could kind of look back on things and have some interesting things to say. So I guess, yes, I'm looking forward to that in a, in a tentative Bill Caesar way. I'm all for disaster thinking. Come on. Come on. If you, if you think the worst is going to happen, when only the half worst happens, it's it's all great. It's all great. Um, a is for, is actually, A is for actually, A is for actually, a book that you didn't expect to like, but did. Um, I think I'll go with The Broken Sword by uh, Poole Anderson. Uh, Poole Anderson is somebody, uh, is a, kind of like a science fiction fantasy author who I thought kind of wrote kind of just sort of uh, your usual kind of straightforward kind of slocky kind of science fiction. I think I may have even read one of his much later books. But uh, The Broken Sword uh, is this book that is is told uh, in uh, mythic, mythic language of... Um, of the, uh, I think it's the Vikings. I'm trying to think about it now. I didn't prepare this one as much, but I was really surprised because it had that kind of saga language and it had a real, he's, Poole Anderson was really good at this. It, it had this driving momentum to it. I could see sitting around a, a fire and listening to, to the, to a bard or whatever they called that in the, in the Viking, in the Viking tradition, tell me this story. And I was, it was like, I was quite, that was a very pleasant surprise of, I wasn't expecting such an authentic kind of experience, um, going into, uh, going into that book. Um, 10, uh, A is for affected, a character book or writer that you feel is pretentious. Uh, I know this won't piss off Steve Donahue, but it might piss off other, others of you. Um, I'm going to go with Slaughterhouse Five by, uh, Kurt Vonnegut. Um, which, which it's the only Vonnegut I've read. And I, I could put this down as the ambivalent or I, uh, there's long bits of that book that I didn't care about. I liked, I liked the, the voice of the, um, I liked the voice of the narrator at the beginning of that book. Uh, but I found a lot of the kind of the 50s sci-fi stuff, um, didn't work. And I found the, the part that I found the most pretentious is, is his signature is that, and so it goes, and so it goes. And he keeps on saying, and so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes, and so it goes. And it was just like, um, it became so repetitious. And I think I'm supposed to put so much meaning into this. And I didn't, I wasn't feeling the story. I mean, there's intellectually, okay, I'm, I'm getting the story, but it's like, and so it goes it, to me, feel felt affected that did not, some things they ring the bell for you and other things they clunk. And that, that phrase clunked for me. So all you, I know, I know you, you, you want to get fans out there. You can be a little bit emotional, but let's just, just let's agree to disagree. Let's agree, agree to disagree. Um, oh, number 11, A is for, A is for, how's it going, eh? See, that's how you do it uh, out there. Uh, a book you liked by a Canadian writer or, or one you want to read. Now, I am a Canadian and I have a, I have a love-hate relationship with Canadian literature. It's not exotic to me. It's it's the stuff that they tried to force you to read in uh, school, and they always picked the most dry, respectable Canadians to, to shove down your throat. So uh, it's it's my it's the area where my my education has probably um, been at me the most. And by education, in this case, I I do mean up to high school, because once you get out of high school, then they start they 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 oh, suddenly they open up the secret doors and they start handing you the actually the the, the good books. At least they did. 
back in ye olde days by the time I graduated in 80. I'm sure past then it's it's wonderful now and you all get really interesting kick-ass books that are that'll just drive you into reading. Um, um, I'm going to go with Perfect Night to Go to China by David Gilmore. Um, it's about a father, a father losing his son. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. And it's just, it's got this beautiful, uh, sparse writing. There's other books of David Gilmore that I don't work, don't work at all. But this one, for some reason, perhaps maybe lack of female characters in it, um, really, uh, it really, it really sang. It really, it really worked well. It's, it's, I have some books, um, I was talking about like kind of simple, simple writing and it's not like it's simple writing, but it's just elegant and it's, it's kind of cut to the core. I guess there could be, a, I'm sure Gilmore is such a kind of a macho man. There could be some, some, uh, Hemingway worship in there, uh, in the not, not great sense, but it, 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 this is, this, I think, I thought this was a, a actual good thing of, this is Gilmore's voice coming through in this book. Uh, and it was quite beautiful and quite sparse and spare. And that, just that feeling kind of, that, st that stays with, that stays with me, um, right, right there. So yeah, that would be my choice for a Canadian author, eh? You gotta have a Canadian author, eh? Uh, number 12, A is for Anticlimax, a book you thought fizzled out at the end which I found very hard to think of um, because if it really fizzled out at the end, but I enjoyed the rest of the book, I probably just don't remember. Uh, so I have to kind of end up going back to kind of more of an ambivalent book, which would be uh, the night circus night circus by uh, Aaron, uh, Aaron uh, Morgenstern, um, which was, I thought was a book that was written by a theater kid. It felt like a theater kid who's like, I'm going to put on a show and I'm, I'm going to make amazing sets and I'm beautiful costumes. And there's not going to really be a story that is, is too terribly interesting. I don't really believe in the love story between the two at this front. It's actually, it's all the little side characters that I, I like the most, but I think as it built and built, all those flaws became more and more to me. So by the end, I didn't care. I did not care at all. And they have a battle. There's a, uh, it's just, uh, I think there's a battle. I can't, honestly can't remember. That's a book that fizzled as it, as it went. It's like, it's, it's like I, I began to lose interest in all the beautiful sets, um, as we went along. And, um, we started focusing more on that love relationship at the center of that book. And it just did nothing for me, nothing for me. I didn't care about them at all. Uh, so I don't know if that's a great answer or not, but that's a book I wanted to, I guess I get to vent about, uh, being from a while ago and I'm free from actually remembering much details from it so I can blather on. Um, and, uh, number 13, um, A is for all the booktubers tag a swack of people and I'm not going to tag a swack of people. I'll tag three people. Uh, as, as Sean has said in his, let's, let's, you know, everybody who wants to do this tag is going to do this tag. I do disagree with him. I think that, um, tagging people has the, 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 uh, benefit of me getting to appreciate some booktubers and put their names out there to people who actually watch to the very end of this video, which is taking forever. Thank you, Sean. This is your fault. 13 questions, 13 it's going to be long. Okay. Um, A is for all the booktubers. I'm going to tag uh, Intellectual Reads, uh, who just did a video on uh, Women in Love by D.H. Lawrence, which you should totally check out. Uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to tag uh, Leo Kebble Vlogs, uh, who just did the booktube newbie tag um, after uh, kind of returning to booktube after uh, some years, some years apart from it. Uh, and so, uh, yeah. Yeah, welcome back, welcome back, and uh, hey, jump into it, do some tags. Um, and then I'm going to tag Savvy, uh, who is a kind of an author to book to crossover uh, person who is, um, she's, uh, she's an, so she's an author of some, um, some, uh, bossy po bo po some body positive LGBT uh, plus uh, romance with a sci-fi twist, uh, book uh and some children books based on uh real rescue dogs so uh you know 
dog, real rescue dogs are positive LGBT plus. That's awesome stuff. Uh, and also uh, is going to do is doing uh, stuff about, you know, on, on the booktube side of things too. So uh, I'm glad to have found, found to found her channel. I'm glad she found mine. So yes, yes. So I, those are the three people I tag and everybody else who wants to do it. Ah, see you later. <laughs>